this one line to you, it, it, you know, like in this song, man, if you did not catch it, you got to catch this line. You know, I don't know if you knew this, but the kingdom of God is more caught than it is taught. And you got to catch things that God says and God does. And yeah. So, he, you know, here's this line. Ready? How the Lord takes by its corners this old world and shakes us forward and shakes us free to run wild with the hope. To run wild with the hope. The hope that this thirst will not last long that it will soon drown in a song not sung in vain. Are you serious? Did you yes. catch that? Yes. Yes, Did you catch that? The hope that this thirst that you have, like, like, some, like something is missing. I'm not at home. I don't feel totally at home here. But I, I, you know, I know I'm meant for more. This hope that this thirst of that will not last long. It will soon drown in a song. Not sung in vain. And the song is the love and life and lordship and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know. And I mean, this is powerful poetry. Powerful poetry. So for the next 20 minutes, we're, we are going to talk about this. <laughs> and um, I just want to play a clip from one of my favorite movies. And... <laughs> We're going to talk about it, and if I can find it, and we'll go from there. <laughs> <clears throat> the field is at the post. Jack Anderson with the call. Horses now loaded in. He laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. He does not shy away from the sword. He cannot stand still when the trumpet sounds.
So in my opinion, I read his story. He yeah. had a heart twice the size of a normal. That's horse. right. That's right. So when, it, so in my opinion, the three greatest athletes that ever lived were Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, and Secretariat. <laughs> so I'm Italian. Yeah. So yeah. I was, I was, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. in the. My father and my grandfather used to go to Monmouth all the time, and they used to bet on the ponies. So, you know, I think my father, I think my grandfather, man, was born with a racing form in his uh, hand. <laughs> so it's sort of, you know, it's kind of an Italian thing. So I wouldn't, so I would be kicked out of the club if I never went to the racetrack. So, uh, but it is. Um, uh, Secretariat. So in that movie, it said he won by 30 lengths. So that's wrong. He actually only won by 25 lengths. But, but he did have a heart. So when he died, they actually did an autopsy, you know, on him, and they found out that he had a heart two times the size of the, you know, of a normal, you know, horse. So we're gonna talk. But you know what Secretariat always used to do, which is kind of rare. Secretariat, you, you know, he was a great closer. Okay, but he also used to come out of the gate strong. He used to come out of the gate strong every race. He wasn't one of these horses that lagged behind. He did sometimes, but most of the time he went wire to wire. He went wire to wire. He came out of the gate strong. So you know, you know, I, I mean, I had to tailor a message that had to do with you know coming out of the gate strong in 2023. So we're going to discuss that for the next 20 minutes and see what God says to you. You know what? Listen, man, bottom line is you were built to go fast and you were built to go far. Okay? We were not built to limp our way through lives. Okay? You all know what, you know, you know, you know John 10.10, 10, you know, when Jesus <laughs> says, I have come that they may have life, comma, and have it to the abundantly and have life more abundantly. The question is, which side of the comma are you on? Are you, are, you know, are, you know, are you living? Are you just existing, or are you living life abundantly? Right? It's like I'm gonna live until I die, and I'm not gonna get the two confused. And there's some people that are already dead; they just haven't made it official yet. Okay? So we're gonna we're we're gonna talk about that, right? Here we go. The first thing is the most important thing that I'm gonna say. And if you don't do this, then you don't really have to listen to this message. You can, you can just, you know, enjoy the music and have a cup of coffee and maybe, you know, whatever, you know. But this is the most important thing. And don't go any further if you're not willing to. So, Joshua chapter 24 in verse number 15, the message version. You ready? Do you have ears to hear this morning? Yes. yes. Come on. Yes. All right, yes. here you go. This, you know, that's what it said. If you decide, this is what Joshua says to the nation of Israel. If you decide that it's a bad thing to worship God, then choose a God that you rather serve and do it today. So, you know, that verse reeks with the, you know, imperativeness to make a decision today, right? Just make your choice, whatever, you know? I mean, God's a big boy. He gave you free will. He can... You know, handle it. Just, just make a choice. And you know, it's you know, it's like make up your mind. It's like, so when I used to do karate many years ago, I used to like to break concrete patio blocks, and I used to like to break boards. So I did demonstrations the whole nine yards. I was one of those guys, man, that you see, like on a TV, man, that goes down with their elbow, man, and break concrete patio blocks and all this stuff and boards. <laughs> so, but you know what? Whenever I broke a board or broke a concrete patio block. I did it here before I did it here or with my foot. I did it here first. I made the decision that my hand was going to go through this block, hell or high water. If it took two times, three times, four times, it was going to end up on the other side of that board. Boom. And then I broke it. Wow. You know, that's what Josh was talking about. Like, make a decision. Do it here first. You know, it's like you have the mindset, right? It's, you know, it's like, this is what I do. This is just what I do. Right? So, okay, so we got that out of the way. So coming out of the gate strong equals, what does that mean? It equals nothing less than letting Jesus call the shots in your life. Like, that's what I mean. When I say coming out of the gate strong, I mean 
living life where you let Jesus call the shots. And nobody does it perfectly other than me. I understand. <laughs> but that's what it means, right? That's what it means in a nutshell. So what happened in night? Who who knows what happened? I'm I'm gonna give you it in tears. What happened in 1932 in the city of Chicago? I'll, 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 yes. Saint Valentine's <clears throat> No, that was actually earlier. 19. Yes. The Great Chicago Fire. Okay. You know I don't know. Maybe that's true. In Wrigley Field. In Wrigley Field. Okay, man. I'm getting closer. In the fifth inning of the World Series. Uh -huh. It's very famous. One of the greatest home run hitters in the history of the world was at home plate, and he took his bat, and he pointed towards center field, and he called his shot, right? He called his shot. The famous shot, called, the famous called shot heard around the world. 1932, Wrigley Field, Babe Ruth, center field, fifth inning, boom. That's what they say, at least. Like... This is what I'm talking about. Letting Jesus call the shot in your life. That's what coming out of the gate strong. So if you're interested, there's three things to implement if you want Jesus to call the shots in 2023. There are three things that you have to apply, right? <clears throat> Thank God I went to Primo Sub. Man, you ever been to Primo Subs, guys? And you went, well, okay. Thank God. Every time I go to Wawa and get a sub at Wawa, you know, I'm good. I'm, 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 be careful. <laughs> we have a Wawa employee in the house, so maybe I should say this. Every time I go to Wawa, I enjoy my experience at Wawa. <laughs> especially the one in Lawrence. Especially the one in Lawrence. But, but sometimes, sometimes I got to admit, I got to admit, sometimes when I ask for a sub, listen, I'm the chicken, so I'm the chicken breaded chicken sub. I'm the custom mm -hmm. chicken breaded sandwich with American cheese, right. lettuce, lettuce and tomatoes. I'm the extra oil and vinegar and I'm the extra mayonnaise guy. Okay. okay? Most of the time, mm -hmm. Wawa people, I don't know, I guess they don't like mayonnaise very much. Mm -hmm. They don't apply the mayonnaise. Just apply the darn. But when I go right. primo sub and say mayonnaise, okay. oh, extra mayonnaise, they, they lay it on. Yes. They lay it on. This is to be a, listen, what I'm saying is to be applied. Right. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, this has to be applied. Mm -hmm. It does, ain't going to do nobody any good. Mm -hmm. Ain't no use in ordering a ham and cheese sub with extra mayonnaise mm -hmm. if they don't put it on. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. <laughs> Number one, develop an appetite for good food. <laughs> you know, as a nice Italian boy, I have an appreciation for that. Mm -hmm. Develop an appetite for good food. Food. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 25 in the message version. An appetite for good brings much satisfaction, but the belly of the wicked always wants more. I love that. Proverbs 13, 25. An appetite for good brings much satisfaction. Matthew 5 and verse number 6 says, the message version too. You're blessed when you work up a good appetite for God. He is food and drink. In the best meal you'll ever eat. Wow. So so I know a guy, ready? So I know a guy, you know, um, who uh, who went to a restaurant with with his wife, okay? And he wanted to go out and he wanted to to go get a nice steak. Okay? So he went went to the restaurant and he says, you know, he goes to the restaurant and, and then the waiter comes over. And he says, listen, listen, I don't know if you have any good waiters or if you have any bad waiters, but I, I, I just sort of want your average run-of-the-mill waiter. So they brought, you know, somebody average there. And then the guy took their order, and he said, listen, I don't, I don't want your best steak. I don't want your worst steak. I just want something average, nothing great, nothing too bad, just sort of average run-of-the-mill steak, right? And then he had the steak, and then... And, and the dessert came, okay? And then the dessert menu came, and he said, hey, listen, I don't want nothing crazy, nothing great, nothing terrible. I just want something average. So just bring me out something average. So would you think that guy is sort of out of his mind? Like, <laughs> like why, would, why, would you go to, uh, why would you go to an average restaurant 
ask for an average waitress or waiter, ask for an average piece of meat, ask for an average piece of cheesecake. But that's what we do. Like, we settle for an average life. We settle for less than God's best for our lives. Like, we have appetites for lots of things that don't satisfy. And you know, you know what I'm talking about. They just don't do it. But, but the Bible says to work up an appetite. Work up. You are blessed when you work up a good appetite for God. For he is food and drink and the best meal you'll ever eat. You know, and it's your choice, right? I mean, if I said, okay, well, you can have a 24-ounce grizzly Delmonico steak with all the trimmings, with a baked, loaded baked potato, with, with bacon bits and sour cream and cheese, you know, or, or, or you could have a sloppy joe with, with cold beans. On the side, like, like that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. But, but yet we live our lives, and we have appetites for things that never fully satisfy. Anything less than Christ and what He and and how He wants us to live our lives, you know, it may taste good for ten minutes, but that's about it. There's no substance. And you know it's you know it's true, right? Amen. It's just true. But the problem is the problem is this. You know, sloppy Joe sandwich is going to cost you seven ninety nine. A twenty four ounce steak is going to cost you. Thirty dollars. It's going to cost you at least thirty dollars. Actually, if you go to Arthur's, it costs thirty seven ninety nine. But, <laughs> but, but, but you know, I don't know. I just heard that. I just heard that. I don't know, I don't know if it's true. But that's the problem. It costs. This life costs. And you know the language I'm talking. I don't have to go, you know, I don't have to go any further. It costs. It, it may cost you your will. Whoa. My will? Wait a minute. You mean I can't decide what is good for me? I can't, I, you, know, you know, I can't call the shots for my own life? That's what you mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. It costs. But the payoff is always so sweet, man. There's nothing like a nice grizzled 24 hour Ounce steak with the side with a nice baked potato and garlic bread and cheese. I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention the garlic bread and cheese. Sorry about that. <laughs> Number two, stop listening to yourself and others and start listening to what God thinks and says about you. Amen. Come on, who do you talk to more than anyone else in your life? Yourself. Who do you listen to more than anyone else in your life? Yourself. And most of the time, and you know what? I, you know, I like you guys. I do. Listen, I'm Tony. I'm your friend. I try to keep the cookies on the bottom shelf so everyone can eat. You know, I'll keep it simple. I like you guys, so really. But, you know, it's probably a better idea if you stop listening to all the nonsense minutes you feed yourself in your own thoughts and start listening to what God thinks and says about you. Amen. Probably a little bit smarter. Yeah. Okay? So Isaiah chapter 45, verse number 9, NLT version, says this. Does a clay pot argue with its maker? Does the clay argue with the one who shapes it? Saying, stop, you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. But you know what? Hey, listen, if I buy a car... Okay, you know, I can buy a car, okay, you know, if I buy a Honda, okay, and if I decide to bring that Honda into the ocean, and, and you know, you know, I'm allowed to do it, you know, I got my own free will, I can do it if I choose to, God's not going to stop me, no one's going to stop me, you know, if I buy a boat, say, okay, man, I'm going to buy a nice, nice speedboat. And I'm just going to put it on the highway and go down 195 and see what happens. Hey, I'm allowed to do it, right? But they're not made for that purpose. The maker of the Honda made it for the road. The maker of the boat made it for the water. You can do whatever you want. We can do whatever we want. But when we're not in alignment with God's purposes for our lives, it's just uh, a train wreck. Mm. Come on. I don't need to go any further, do I? I don't need to go any further, do I? I mean, God gives us free will, and he says, do it. But it's not going to work very well because it's, you know, a boat's not designed for the road. We're not designed. We are designed to crave God and the things of God. That's what we're wired for and live in, 
you know, ways that are pleasing to uh, him. So, so Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. Listen to this. This is what God says. He says, my thoughts are not like your thoughts. And my ways are far beyond anything that you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than yours. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. It's like, why would you want to listen to what I think about you? Why would you want to listen to what anybody else thinks about you? You know, uh, a mother or father, man, that perhaps did not treat you too well. Or people, why would you want to think what anyone else thinks about you? When God's thoughts are that much higher, like that much higher, as the heavens are higher than, than this floor, I mean, think about it. That's a big gap. That's a big gap. Why would you want to listen to anybody other than what he thinks and says about you? It doesn't make any sense, right? So what does God think and say about you? A few things. Let me just read it. In 2 um, in Corinthians 5, 17, he says, If anyone is in Christ, he's a brand new creation. The old has gone. Behold, the new is here. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, For you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I know Sheena loves that word, wonderful light. God's light is <laughs> wonderful. He called you out into his wonderful light to be a people that he possesses, a people for his, his own possession. Hey, so when you put on, like, a movie, like, did you ever see um, a demonic movie? Come on, help me out here. What a, Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, right? So in those movies, it's easy to spot the person who is demon-possessed because they're usually... Have green pea, man, it's coming out of their nostrils and mouth, and they have a head that's spinning around, right? And it's easy to spot it. Yeah. Can you tell if somebody is God possessed? Can you just look at someone and go, man, he, he is possessed by God, you know? God is just all over him. Not so easy in this world. That's what God's calling us to, right? That's what he's calling us to. Okay, Matthew 5 14. <coughs> This is another thing that God says about you. He says that, you know, he says that you are the light of the world. Okay? 1 John 3, chapter 1. See what a great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. You know, Isaiah 43, 4. You are precious and honored in my sight because I love you. I mean, you know, this is what God thinks and says about us. Why would we listen to anything else? So stop listening to yourself and others and start listening to God. Number three, the most, one of the most important things, I think it's very, very important. Number three, if you want to come out of the gates well and let Jesus call the shots, number three is imperative. Commit to living your life in community with other people who are going in the same direction. Okay? African proverb, it says, go alone and go fast, but go together and go far. Commit to living your life in community with like-minded people. Proverbs 17, 7, set, Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. I, I, you know, I do like you, you know what I, Greg, I like you. But you can't really sharpen yourself too well. You need other people to sharpen you. The same with me. My friend Matthew comes over every Thanksgiving. He's the designated turkey carver. And my wife had to substitute for him this year at our Thanksgiving outreach. And she did a yeoman's job. Give my wife a hand. But Matthew comes over, man, he's a good friend of mine, and he brings his knife, and he brings the, the little thing, uh, you know, and he swipes, what is that thing, you know, the little iron thing, and he got the knife, and he swipes it on the thing, and before you know it, man, that thing is like, ooh, woo, you just look at it, and you get cut. You look at the thing wrong, and you're like, you got a boo-boo. <laughs> We, we need to do that for one another. It's not optional. This is not optional. It's mandatory. Hebrews chapter 10 says, and I said it, you know, last week, let us consider how we might spur one another towards love, towards good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are the habit of doing, 
but instead encouraging one another towards a different way of life. Amen. I mean, you know, it's just simple stuff. For God's image and likeness to be carved or replicated in you, right? His character, man, to be carved or replicated in your life. We need to live in community with each other. And I'm going to close here with this. It goes all the way back to Genesis 1, verse number 26. It doesn't go back, you know, everyone thinks that that that, that living in, you know, living, you know, in community goes back to the Old Testament and we see it. It goes back to Genesis chapter 1, we see it. I'll prove it to you. Genesis chapter 1 in verse number 26. Guess what it says? You're in luck because I have it written down. <laughs> God said, this is in the beginning, when God created, this is right before God created mankind. He said this, God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Plural, our, us, not singular. That does not mean that there's not one God. He is one God. He's three different persons with three different separate functions, but acting in unity with one nature and one essence for one purpose. God said, hey, you know, Holy Spirit, Father, I got a great idea. Let's just do this wonderful thing and make this, make this thing called man. And we'll make him into women. And we'll make him into, you know, men. And we'll make him in our image so that they can, like, look like us. Like... So, so, so that they can share our character, our nature, replicate and duplicate it on the planet Earth and multiply our character on Earth, right? That's what he said. So what does that tell you? God is a community all unto himself. God is a community all unto himself. And God says, let us make man in our likeness. The likeness of God, the character and nature, is replicated inside of you when we share in community with each other. It's done in community. He didn't say let me, he said let us and are. The importance of community, we see all the way back in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 26. I bet you never heard, heard that before. But it's true. It's true. I mean, so, anyways... So in closing, you know, I'm a multiple choice guy. So I was the classic underachiever. Uh, you know, I was the classic underachiever in middle school and high school. I, I, I could have done a lot better. I just, I was just doing my thing, you know, acting the fool. And, but you know what, though? I loved, I'll tell you what I loved. I loved when I was, when I went into my class and there was a pop quiz or something, and it was multiple choice. And I had four answers that I could choose from because I knew I had at least, I, I had a 25% chance of being right, right? It's, that was great. That was awesome. I had a 25 chance of being right. And I didn't even study, right? I love that, right? But guess what? All, all of the things I just said are not optional. You don't get, a, you don't get to pick A, B, C, or D. You got to fill in all three circles mm -hmm. to come out of the gates well, to live a life of letting Jesus call the shots. You have to do it in community. You got to start. You got to know the <coughs> Word of God. You got to. You got to have a relationship with His Word. You got to read the Bible. You got to know what He thinks and says about you, and stop listening to yourself and other people. Okay, and you have to. And you have to develop an appetite for all things God. This is not optional. So I hope you're in because there's nothing else worth 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 living for. You know? And there's pretty much nothing I I you know ain't tried. So I've tasted lots of different things in life. Nothing tastes as good as Jesus Christ. Nothing. Amen. Yes, dear. They say God won't give you more than you can handle. Yeah. But sometimes it feels like way too much. Sure does. So, I guess. It sure does. I, I guess maybe I'm trying to do too well, much. Well, when we're well, you know, in closing, I'll you know, I'll answer that question. That's a great question. No, it's fine. It's fine. You know what? Listen, we live in a we're not home. 
It goes back to, you know, you know, we're, 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 we're not home. There's a thirst. There's a thirst. That's never going to be fully quenched on this side of heaven because we're not home. This is not our home. And because it's not our home, you know, it's a broken system. And things happen. And sometimes life is really hard. And that's another reason why we need to go together and live in community. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, listen. Happy New Year. We will be here Wednesday. So we were closed last week because I was just showing so So I'll be here Tuesday, and we're going to do Bible study on Wednesday. So great to see you guys. Uh, and give yourself a big hand. Yeah. <laughs>